Wing from Starliner Mission Control here in Houston. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, for the first rendezvous and docking of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft with the International Space Station. I'm Boeing's Jim May. And I am NASA's Leah Cheshire. This mission began almost 23 hours ago. We had liftoff yesterday from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida aboard a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket that liftoff at 9.52 a.m. Central Time. Since then, the crew has conducted some demos along the way. Starliner has been steadily raising its orbit on a precisely timed course to dock to the space station, now coming up in about 2 hours and 38 minutes. And we have our first views of Starliner from the International Space Station, now crossing over into an orbital daytime over the South Pacific Ocean. Starliner is flying autonomously right now, but uh, we will see the crew transition to manual piloting at about a 260 meter hold point, giving them a chance to take the reins of Starliner. Outside the keep-out sphere now, Butch and Sonny uh, remaining in a hold position. That go to proceed inwards has been given by the teams confident enough in the configuration of Starliner with the necessary redundancies to back away if needed uh, once inside the keep-out sphere. Lots of coordination happening on both sides uh, before giving that call. From the view of the space station, you're look at, looking at Starliner a little more than 220 meters away. The crew has been given a go to switch back to manual mode and push in just a little bit to the whole box before pressing in. Team's continuing to analyze the hot fire test. And we're tracking and following along with the teams before going ahead to press in. From this view in the orbital daytime, you can see some of the RCS jets firing as crew takes manual control. And we are coming up on 30 meters from the International Space Station, getting a beautiful view now of Starliner as it continues its approach. We are in an automated piloting mode at this time, so the crew is not having to command the spacecraft. Just passed through the 30 meter mark and you see the Starliner's forward docking lights turn on. Later, hold, confirm. Houston copies, and uh, Starliner, we're expecting six minute uh, lighting hold before NDS configures for docking. Okay. Station Houston on the big loop, Starliner's at the 10 meter hold point. ISS crew, perform 1.106, step 1.2. And the Starliner crew have gotten the authority to proceed for the final approach. Starliner is currently at just over 9 meters away, approaching at about 0 0.05 meters per second, or 5 centimeters per second, towards the known two forward docking port. Again, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore, the commander, and Sonny Williams, the pilot on the crew flight test today. This is an autonomous docking, meaning they are monitoring from inside Starliner, but the spacecraft is currently flying itself. Now less than three meters away from the International Space Station. Good performance calls coming from teams in mission control. Starliner at one and a half meters away, currently about 
25 seconds from docking. Point five meters. Contact capture. We see the same. At 12.34 p.m. Central Time above the Southern Indian Ocean, we have confirmation of contact and capture of NASA's Boeing crew flight test and Starliner aboard the International Space Station. Butch and Sonny have made their arrival. Starliner Houston on the big loop. We've all been waiting a little while for this call. That was an OK three wire fly Navy docking complete. Okay, indeed. Nice to be attached to the big city in the sky. And from the ISS flight control team, congratulations to all NASA and Boeing teams on this historic day. Butch and Sonny, nicely done. Welcome back to the ISS. Outstanding. It's a great place to be. We're looking forward to staying here for a couple of weeks and uh, getting all the things done in Starliner that we need to get done and also on station, ready to work. As you can see, NASA astronaut Matt Dominic has uh, donned or put on some safety goggles and a mask as he prepares to open the APAS hatch. This has been exposed to the vacuum of space and with the docking of a new spacecraft. Uh, it's, he's taking an extra precaution ahead of opening that hatch. Of course, uh, we will still have to wait for the Starliner side of the hatch to be opened. Matt Dominic, NASA astronaut, has opened the APAS hatch. He will go in and take some photographs of that space between the APAS and Starliner hatch. From what we can see in this view, it looks like we have most, if not all, of the crew members aboard the International Space Station awaiting their visitors to open the hatch on the Starliner side. Currently living on the station, we have the Expedition 71 crew, including NASA astronauts Tracy Dyson, Mike Barrett, Matthew Dominic, and Jeanette Epps, and Roscosmos cosmonauts Oleg Kononenko, Nikolai Chub, and Alexander Grabyankin. Lots of cheering here in the room, big hugs. Sunny William coming through in her blue flight suit. Oh. And followed shortly behind by Commander of Starliner, Butch Wilmore. Now back on the space station, the third visit for both astronauts and the first crewed flight test of the Starliner spacecraft. Everyone looking very happy, like they had a great ride.
and the ingress or the entrance of Butch and Sunny coming at 2.45 p.m. Central Time. Again, their arrival to the space station today at 12.34 p.m. Central Time, bringing the space station total uh, crew right now up to nine people. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready. Congratulations to all the NASA and Boeing teams on this incredible milestone. Butch and Sonny, the ISS flight control team, is thrilled to see you back on ISS. Station, please begin your remarks. Butch, Sonny, we are glad to see them all here in the International Space Station. And uh, we want to congratulate the uh, whole team uh, in different uh, motion con mission control center for launch, for docking, and uh, of the end, we are very happy. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, we are thrilled as well. Um, I'm not sure we could have gotten a better welcome. I mean, <laughs> we had music, we had pojo, uh, Matt was dancing. <laughs> It was great. Uh, what a wonderful place to be. Uh, great to be back here. Uh, it feels like, I mean, it, well, obviously, Sonny and I have been gone for a, a little while, but uh, it's very familiar. There's only one problem. Matt is in my crew quarters. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. But, hey, thank you all for the great welcome. And, and thanks to ULA got us going, Boeing kept us going, uh, Mission Control MO kept us going and got us here. Uh, what a great, wonderful team effort. I mean, team, team, team. This, this organization, these organizations are the epitome of teamwork. And it is a blessing and it's a privilege to be a part of it. It's, it's just amazing. Yeah, and I just want to say a big thanks to family and friends who've lived this <laughs> for a long time. And uh, I think you're glad we're not with you anymore. <laughs> and we have another family up here, which is just awesome. Like uh, Butch said, we uh, it was such a great welcome, a little dance party, and uh, that's the way to get things going. And uh, we're just we're just happy as can be to be up in space. Uh, one in Starliner, on an Atlas V, and then here on the International Space Station. It just doesn't get much better. Yeah, we're, we're ready to go to work for the international of, of partners here. Whatever it is you got us to do, we're ready. All right. Uh, we're ready. Thank you all so much. <laughs> all right. That concludes the welcome ceremony. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs> 